if they turn the age of 18. 18. What were we doing at 18? What was I doing at 18? He was already in business. Now, uh, with a deep longing and desire to see economic emancipation through job creation and investments brought to the poor in Africa, our guest of honor, who is the Harvard alumni, he has since had over hundreds companies, hundreds companies, and 30 partnerships in diverse industries and countries. From 2007, Maybe I need to repeat that. He has, had since, he has since had over 100 companies and 30 partnerships <laughs> in diverse industries <laughs> and countries. From 2007, real estate and property development have been his primary focus through his public fee, uh, Victoria Force uh, listed company, West Prop Holdings, the largest customer-centric developer of exceptional properties in Zimbabwe. Uh, some of the awards and accolades that our guests of honor and West Prop have won over the years include, but are not limited to the following. Forbes Best of Africa Most Innovative CEO of the Year 2021. Mashona Lentich. Mashonaland Region Businessman Winner 2021. Uh, this was accorded by the Zimbabwe National Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Company of the Year National Awards 2021 from the Zim Zimbabwe Business Awards. Residential Developments uh, in Zimbabwe 2022. Uh, awarded uh, by Northern International Property Awards in Dubai. Chief Executive Office of the Year 2023 awarded by the Zimbabwe Property Land Development and Construction Awards, Company of the Year 2023, awarded by the Zimbabwe Property Land Development and Construction Awards, Organization of the Year 2023, Africa, awarded by the African Achievers Awards, House of Lords United Kingdom, Innovation CEO of the Year 2023, awarded by the African Achievers Award, House of Lords United Kingdom, Best Residential Development uh, Units, uh, Millennium Heights Apartments and Estates, uh, awarded uh, in Dubai. Businessman of the Year 2023, awarded by the Zimbabwe Institute of Management. Private Sector of the Year 2023, awarded by the Zimbabwe Institute of Management. And his biggest award and recognition is being our guest of honor tonight. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Kenneth Raydon Sharp. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Past President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. All protocol observed. It truly is an honor to be here today talking to such a distinguished audience and I'm really truly humbled to be your guest of honor. I must start by a few corrections. I arrived at 6.30, which to me was punctual because I was told we were starting at 7. <laughs> I believe in punctuality. In fact, I started an event last year but one with the guest of honor being no less than the National Housing Minister at the time, Minister Garwe. And the time of the event was 10 a.m. starting. And at 10 to 10, I told the MC, get ready everyone to start at 10. And he said, it's not possible. The guest of honor is not here. The minister's team has phoned and said he'll be delayed. I said the time to start was 10 o'clock. We started at 10. And we started at 10 o'clock. When the minister arrived at 6 minutes past 10, he came in, he was very embarrassed, he apologized, and when he started speaking in his keynote, he said he will never be late to another event again. <laughs> so I think we should set an example, and we should start on time and finish on time. Because the most valuable commodity we have is actually our time. We can control many things in our lives, but one thing we have no control over is the amount of time that we have left. Just our dear friend Kamal Kalfan passed away yesterday. We were with his wife consoling her this morning, friend of our family. God bless him and may his soul rest in peace. 
I also want to make a correction that President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, who I met some years ago, told us in his talk that most speeches in Africa, especially from African politicians, begin with an apology. And we all apologize to each other. But I would say differently to correct President Kagame. Let us not in Africa begin with apologies, but let's rather begin with thanks. Thanksgiving for what we have, thanksgiving for each other, and appreciation for the time that we have together. I also want to say tonight that I believe there are no coincidences, and the awards that were given to me, I really do not deserve them, because I did not do anything that was exceptional. I've just done what the Lord has called me to do. So if a any awards have been mentioned on my name, I give them and all glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. I also want to say tonight, before I start my formal speech, that it's important that we celebrate one another in the spirit of Ubuntu, in the spirit of us as people together. There are many times in our lives as Zimbabweans that we look down upon others. Or we look up at those who have more and have this kind of majelacy attitude. And I think it's wrong. I believe that it's better for us to celebrate our successes together. Because surely if one of us have done well, then all of us do well. If one of us can improve their life and the lives of those around us, then all of us benefit together. Just as in the village, when the village is productive, and there's plentiful food for all, the whole village benefits. We are one big village in Zimbabwe. Let us celebrate our successes together. Tonight is one of those opportunities where this organization, ZNCC, has come together to celebrate those amongst you who've done well. Let us truly honor them and celebrate them tonight. Let their victory be our victory. I was in the United States of America last week I was invited for the first time as a Zimbabwean to sit on the Atlantic Council's International Board of Advisors. The first Zimbabwean to sit in Washington, D.C. on that board. And I, think, and I think what I like about American culture is their attitude towards success. They celebrate success. They want everyone to do well. Let us in Zimbabwe embrace the attitude and the spirit of being successful of celebrating each other. Lastly, I heard the, the good lady mention the word of excellence. We're celebrating people tonight of excellence. One of the things that we've developed in our culture of West Prop, which is a high performance culture of excellence, is to be a winning culture, where we all are winners. No matter if you're the office cleaner, or you're the CEO, everyone in our organization is a leader. I believe that everyone has the capacity to lead. And I was given the opportunity to talk tonight on building a thriving Zimbabwean economy and the role of collaboration in that. It was an interesting topic. I was given a list of topics to choose from. And I'm glad I was given the list because this one resonates very deeply with me. Tonight I want us to focus on something that is critical to the future of our nation, Zimbabwe, building a thriving economy driven by our collective efforts. As a country, it's no secret that we've faced severe and hard economic challenges in recent years, including high inflation many times over the last few decades, currency instability, limited access to foreign cap uh, capital, the complete wiping out of our capital savings bases. The list goes on and on. These challenges have hampered business growth and job creation. However, I am firmly convinced that we can overcome these obstacles and build a brighter future. But I cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. Collaboration, us doing it together, is the key for our success. I always talk about in Zimbabwe, our biggest challenge as a nation is actually ourselves, our mindsets. Because when we have a changed attitude and a changed mindset, then we can begin to achieve something great. 
This also applies to how we approach the subject of working together for the greater good of Zimbabwe. We need to change our mindsets and put aside our differences, be them political or be them religious or be them cultural or be them languages. Let's put them aside and realize that the success of our country lies in our own hands to work together. We need to accept and realize that no one is coming to save us. We have to be our own saviors. However, to save ourselves, we have to accept that we must work together and collaborate, each and every one of us as Zimbabweans, for the betterment of our country. In the context of building a thriving economy, collaboration involves different stakeholders coming together to create a supportive and enabling environment for business to flourish and pl prosper. This can take many forms, including public-private partnerships, triple P. The public sector can provide the stability and infrastructure and platform and template that businesses need to operate effectively. For instance, the government can invest in improving roads, bridges, national grid, and many other essential services that business needs to be able to exist. In return, the private sector can create jobs and drive innovation. At Westprop, we have our own Triple P, our public-private partnership with the city of Harare, and I encourage the city of Gweri to do similar par partnerships. For the development of the recent launched The Hills Lifestyle Estate, a 300 million, yes, 300 million US dollar residential project that will bring a world-class first time in Zimbabwe, US PGA spec golf course, as well as luxury branded residences, which is the first time in Sub-Saharan Africa it's being done. I think it deserves a clap. We recently broke grounds on the project a few weeks ago and works will be commencing soon of construction. This is one example of how private partnerships, private-public partnerships can bring immense benefit to our country and be a stepping stone to leapfrog from us being, can I say, junk uh, to a thriving economy. Collaboration can also be in the form of inter-industry partnerships. Businesses within the same industry can collaborate to share knowledge, resources and best practices. This can lead to improved efficiency, productivity and competitiveness. I usually joke how our competitors in the real estate development sector are inspired by our work and like to copy us. They're even now using our saying, live, work, shop, play, which you can see on the board over there. That's a template we have for our developments, where we believe our lifestyle communities is not just another home or another flat or that, a house that we're building, but rather it's an all-inclusive lifestyle community, a smart community, a smart city, where people can incorporate all aspects of their life, to live in the homes, to work in the offices, to play in the sports fields and other facilities and utilities we create, and also to enjoy the shopping experience that we can build in those areas. It's a one-stop shop of living, a holistic approach to development. And we welcome our competitors following in our, in our example, because it means with greater competition, that we are doing something right as a company that is worth emulating and others to follow in our footsteps. We are also collaborating with other players in our industry. And what brings me most excitement is to see when we do some development, others do many developments around us. For example, in Borodale, where we're building the Mall of Zimbabwe, Millennium Heights, Pokagari Estate, an office park, about 500 million US dollars of development in that one area in Harare. But around us, we've counted no less than 30 other developments within one kilometer radius, totaling more than 150 million US dollars today that are being built because of what we've done in that area. I think that deserves a clap. Well, well done to them. You see, we believe that other players in the industry have a role to play. And that will bring world-class housing 
for Zimbabweans, both at home and abroad. We also, for example, just partnered with one of our competitors, Homelux, to develop a huge piece of land in collaboration with the Ministry of uh, Housing on the east of Harare, and the project is expected to break ground next quarter. Another example of a thriving collaborative project is the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange, the VFX, a regional stock exchange for the first time that is only in US dollars and allows companies from Zimbabwe and other African countries to raise capital and nurture mutually beneficial business relationships. This collaboration between Zimbabwe and other countries has the potential to boost regional investment and economic uh, growth. I'm truly inspired by ZNCC's mission, which is to be a leader in business development in the national economy and a channel of communication between business and the various authorities in Zimbabwe. I looked up the word collaboration and it means the action of working with someone to produce or create something. You see, I was reading a book recently that's titled, It's Not the How, But the Who. And this applies to all aspects of our life. If you want to ask a question, how can I do this? Or how do I solve this problem? Or how do I get access to the capital? That is the wrong question to ask. Rather, you should be asking, who can I find that will give me the access to this capital? Who will solve this problem for me? And it's the same within the ZNCC's mission statement. Because they are talking about the who's. The collaboration, the network of the various authorities in Zimbabwe and the private sector. So they are the who in the room tonight. Theirs is a mission that sees the importance of collaboration and promotes collaboration. Let's take the opportunity to encourage every one of us here to make use of such great organizations like ZNCNC to cultivate, cultivate relations with other businesses and find areas where we can collaborate together and build a thriving national economy. Economic collaboration can be a powerful tool for addressing specific economic challenges. Let me give you an example of two. Access to finance. Collaboration between banks, microfinance institutions and development agencies can increase access to finance for SMEs, which are an integral part of the Zimbabwean economy. And even for larger companies like ourselves, today at Westprop, we have a mortgage book of almost 30 million US dollars, which is bigger than any other mortgage book in the country of the banks, but we're not a bank. So surely we should collaborate, not only the financial sector and the banks, but developers, because together we'll be able to access more capital. Innovation and technology is another one. Collaboration between universities, research institutions, and businesses can drive innovation and technological development. This can lead to the creation of new products and services, improved efficiency, and increased productivity. Collaboration is not limited to within our borders. By working with other countries in the region, Zimbabwe can expand its markets, attract foreign investment, and learn from the best practices. Zimbabwe's membership in the regional economic blocs, like SADC, creates opportunities for collaboration on trade, infrastructure development, and industrial policy. We've also witnessed our regional blocs, such as BRICS, have benefited member states, and more countries like ourselves want to be part of that organization to reap the benefits of collaborative work. Building a thri thriving Zimbabwean economy requires collaboration. Collaboration that comes from changing our mindsets at all levels. By working together, the public and private sectors across industries and borders, we can create a more favorable business environment for local industries, drive innovation, and create jobs. Collaboration is not a magic silver bullet, but it is a powerful tool that we can leverage to overcome challenges and build a brighter future for ourselves and for generations to come. My call to action to all of you here tonight is let us commit to working together to build a more prosperous Zimbabwe. Let us embrace collaboration as a key driver of our economic success. For once, let's put aside our differences because a thriving economy benefits all of us. I often say, if not me, then who? And if not now, then when? And my challenge to all of you is, if not us, 
then who? And if not now, then when? We can all be part of the solution by seeking out opportunities to collaborate with others in our communities, our industries, and across the region. Together we can build a thriving Zimbabwean economy. To finish off, I know that you're getting hungry, and I know there's no free lunches. In fact, in Ukrainian they say, the only place you'll get free cheese is in a mouse trap. Hopefully I don't get a trap, but I get a dinner. So let me finish off by saying on a personal note, about 30 years ago, I had the option to go and live where, where my beautiful wife standing over there is from in Ukraine, where, where she was born. And where business was very good. And I know within a few years I would have been a billionaire. But I chose rather to stay in Zimbabwe, to be a son of the soil where I was born, and to make a difference here. I'm a Mukiwa. I have white skin. Most of you are not Mukiwas. But we all have red blood, and our blood bleeds for our country. In closing, I have a story to tell. All of us have a story to tell. But the narrative I choose to believe is that I would not rather live in the past, which I don't control, nor can I change. But instead, I choose to build a better future. I know that if we collaborate and find the common thread that binds us as Zimbabweans together to make our country great, to work together, then we have hope for a better future. I am doing my part with our vision at West Prop to put one billion bricks in the ground by 2050. My challenge to you all, what will you do tomorrow, next month, next year, in the next 10 and 20 years from now, to make our country, Zimbabwe, a first world nation where people can thrive? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.